HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hopkinton High School honored outstanding alumni with the first ever Top of the Hill ceremony. Adult Services Librarian Heather Backman explains another new resource for downloading ebooks and audiobooks at the Hopkinton Public Library. And Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on HCAM with our HCAM Insider. But first, the former Golden Spoon owners who will be opening the Hopkinton Spoon and owners of the 110 Grill met with the Board of Selectmen to discuss liquor and entertainment licenses. The Board of Selectmen welcomed back the Golden Spoon with their new restaurant, the Hopkinton Spoon, as they held a public hearing for entertainment and liquor licenses. Thank you for coming in. If you please introduce yourselves and tell us what you hope to do and, and uh, we'll go right to it. William Morgan, um, owner of Golden Spoon, uh, formerly Golden Spoon, now reopening as The Spoon. Uh, Samantha Prescott, co-owner of The Spoon. Can you speak up because you, you got a lot of noise in uh, back here? Formerly right known as The Golden Spoon. Right on. Okay. Welcome. Um, we are here to apply for a wine and malt liquor um, license. Okay. Uh, we both worked, uh, Bill was a manager and for 10 years of the previous Golden Spoon and then later um, an owner for four years. I worked there for nine years. Uh, many of my family members have worked at the restaurant. Um, we are here to apply for the wine and malt liquor, um, mostly to focus on our Friday night dinners that we were planning on having, as well as uh, maybe some lunches that we will have um, throughout the week. And mostly looking towards having it for the Friday night dinners to pair Meals with wine and beer. Wonderful. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let's go over and start off Mr. Sistari. Um, first of all, I'm happy to hear that you're coming back to town. Thank you. So, um, with that, uh, I guess I haven't even uh, looked to see what's the location that you're going to be at. Uh, One Lumber Street. One Lumber? Yep. Great. Um, so. Do you have, uh, is there any date in mind for opening, reopening? I'm hoping for the 1st of March. First of March, great. Um, how about what's March first? So, what's the size of the space going to be? Uh, it's eighteen ninety six square feet. And how many seats? Uh, we're looking for about sixty two seats. 62 Maximum seats. is at sixty five. Uh, the chair will um, entertain a motion to approve the application for Section Twelve Wine and Malt Only Restaurant License for Hopkins and Spoon Incorporated to forward to the ABCC for the affirmation. Um, subject to the hours of service being limited to what's wrong, Mr. Kamal? Just want to clear this in my mind. Did the board try to close the A while yes. ago. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for asking, though. Uh, subject to the hours of operation being limited, service, the hours of alcohol service being limited to 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions? Further discussion on this topic? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed, present not voting. That's unanimous. Good. Thank Congratulations you. on that. The selectmen also heard from the 110 Grill, which will soon be opening in the new 77 Main Street Plaza. Tell us what you did since we last saw Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Attorney Kevin Erickson, on behalf of the applicant, uh, since the last time uh, that we met, we did provide an uh, unredacted uh, loan commitment letter. We made a, um, a correction to uh, one section of the license application, which was uh, uh, had a typographical error, a, um, a mistranscription. Okay. Um, and we've provided that information uh, to the board through the, the town manager's office. And um, I, I believe that that addresses the, uh, the outstanding items uh, from the last time that we were here. Okay. Selectman Todd Sestari was in agreement that the outdoor entertainment license should be changed from 1 a.m. to 10 p.m. based on requests by Police Chief Edward Lee. Uh, I want to support the Chief as well. 
I do think that the outdoor entertainment, I think 10 o'clock is a reasonable place to start. Um, you know, if, uh, and I would, I would put the onus on the business that uh, if they find that 10 o'clock is, is proving difficult, uh, then, then you know, they can always make another request uh, at a renewal time or something of that nature. Okay, so Chair will entertain a motion to approve a common victory license for 110 Grill LS Hopkinton LLC. So moved. Second. We have a motion. We have a second for discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimous. So the common victory license is all set. Finally, the entertainment license. Um, the ask here again is for all hours, right, till 1 a.m. basically. That's we correct. A, we, have a, we have a request for a 10 o'clock no outdoor entertainment time. Um, Anybody else have any thoughts on or comments on that? I, I would agree with that. Okay. So, challenge a motion to approve an entertainment license subject to outdoor entertainment being limited to um, to uh, terminating at 10 p.m. So moved. Second. Okay. Any further comments on that? Are you good with that, Mr. So Stanley? that's uh, yeah. So that's 10 o'clock outdoor, one o'clock indoor. Correct. I wasn't yeah. I wasn't touching the indoor part. Okay. I mean, the, the closing hours or anything. Mm -hmm. And again, we can always amend this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're good. Further comments? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, present, not voting. That's approved as well. I think you're all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Hopkinton Spoon and 110 Grill are aiming to open March of 2016. The Hopkinton Top of the Hill program was created largely by Hopkinton High School Assistant Principal Josh Hanna with help from many other staff members and organizations to honor outstanding alumni from Hopkinton High School. This year, was the first year of the new program and six Hopkinton High School alumni were selected to spend the day with the high school students and be honored for their achievements and contributions to the town. The first Top of the Hill ceremony was held. The program was created to honor outstanding alumni from Hopkinton High School. The event was hosted by Hopkinton High School the Hopkinton Parent Teacher Association, the Hopkinton Education Foundation, and the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Committee. Honored in the first class of inductees was Paul Phipps, class of 1939, Mary Harrington, class of 1954, Thomas McIntyre, class of 1972, Denise Millard, class of 1992, Megan Altador, class of 1995, and Sean Terry, class of 2005. Son of Paul Phipps, Rob Phipps, accepted the honor on behalf of his late father. My dad had a, as I said, a very long, full, and, uh, and happy life. Um, his glass was always half full. In fact, I'd say it was 90% full. That's how he looked at life. Um, his, I think his character, his attitude, everything was formed in Hopkinton. Uh, his ability to well, as I said, to be humble, uh, to be sincere and honest and generous, all started here in Hopkinton, back when the town had 2,500 people in it. It, it, it feels a little different. Uh, it, you know, obviously, I, I'm not the one the attendee honor is intended for, but I was happy and honored to receive it on behalf of my dad. He's been gone now three years, and uh, it's nice to know that people still remember his accomplishments and time spent in Hopkinton and uh, his giving spirit. And uh, this, I accept that in his behalf, and I'm honored to do that. Um, now, uh, what do you think he would say to high school kids now? What, what advice do you think he would give them? <laughs> He'd tell them to go in the service, <laughs> which might not go over too big. Uh, but it was a big character builder for him going away and, uh, and seeing all the different cultures that everybody in this country represented and meeting Australians and, uh, and uh, Brits and French. Uh, it, it opened his eyes really after coming from a small town Hopkins. So he would recommend that, you know, hey, a couple of years in, in service, whether it's Peace Corps or the military, it would be good for everybody. As a lifelong resident, fifth generation Hopkintonian, it makes me very proud. I l look back to the years when I went to high school on Main Street from 8 to 1 with a 15 minute recess for lunch. I, I look back on my uh, parents who taught, my father taught me the love of Hopkinton and my mother taught me the appreciation of community service. Well, it's a wonderful honor and uh, it solidifies my love of Hopkinton and the roots that I have here as a fifth generation Hopkintonian. So it was a tremendous honor and I'm very grateful. 
All right, uh, do you have any advice for uh, high school kids? To study hard and to be yourself and to follow your dreams. I mean, all I ever wanted to do was drive a truck and run bulldozers. So how cool is that? That came true. So, But uh, giving back to Hopkinton, it's so easy to do. I mean, it's, it's the only place I know. I never lived anywhere else but Hopkinton. And, uh, you know, I think you learn. You think you learn a lot from your parents as you're growing up. But I think you learn more after you have kids of your own and they go through the school and you see what they do at the school. I mean, they do so many volunteer things from, tur you know, the turkey drives to helping unload Christmas trees for the Lions Club and, and the baseball team would go there and do this and that. And, and you really learned a lot. And I think that's where, you know, later in life I started to wanted to do these projects and things because I obviously love Hopkinton. Well, it's quite an honor. I never expected something like this. Uh, I'm so proud to be in the first class of, of the honorees at the top of the hill. Yeah, I know. I thought uh, maybe. Everybody knows hill is rule. So... <laughs> It's a great, it's a great opportunity, and I'm glad I could be. All right. Do you have any advice that you would give uh, high school kids uh, here at Hopkinton now? Just go after your dreams. That's all you can do, yeah. and and uh, everything will work out right. So just believe in yourself. <laughs> Coming up next on HCAM News, we have much more from the top of the hill ceremony. You'll see a cool new service available at the Hopkinton Public Library, and Courtney will have our HCAM insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508 Welcome back to HCAM News. Before the break, you heard from three of the six honored at the first Top of the Hill induction ceremony. Here are the highlights from the other three inductees, as well as Hopkinson High School Assistant Principal Josh Hanna with reaction to the first year of the Top of the Hill program. And so when you think about the community and the network and the people, um, there is something that draws you back to Hopkinton. So when I think about the milestones from uh, a personal perspective, um, you know, certainly my friends, um, but also, you know, it was my first job uh, in high school was in Hopkinton. My um, 18, almost 18 years at EMC has largely been in Hopkinton. And then, um, you know, I talked about that community and, and that network. Um, my husband, Scott, and I have, you know, now chosen to live in Hopkinton and raise our kids here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an amazing uh, experience. It's a great honor, and um, I'm really excited. All right, uh, if you could give the high school, uh, what, what advice would you give the high school kids? Um, I would say the, my one uh, piece of advice would be to make sure you have a strong network and to get a mentor. I'm, I'm very excited to be back here in Hopkinton. I think uh, when I was telling my story to students today, it made me think that my story is one of unexpected adventure. Uh, where I am is not a place where I ever thought I would be. I, I live in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm an attorney. I never thought I would be a lawyer. And I'm actually the wife of the ambassador of Haiti to the United States. So I, I represent the country of Haiti in Washington. I've had the opportunity to go to the White House and have some amazing adventures. Um, I don't know when I was a student at Hopkinton whether I, I even knew where Haiti was or very much about it, um, but I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about it and I'm, I'm excited in my role to be able to share more about its culture and 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 show people there's more to the country than just poverty. It was a huge honor. I first got an email from Josh Hanna a couple months ago. I was really surprised and, and just really honored. 
All right, now uh, what advice would you give uh, high school kids? I would say to just never set limits on what you can do and, and where you can end up with your life. I've lived a lot of places. I've, I've traveled a lot and, um, and throughout my time in New York and in the Northwest and wherever I've been, um, even to this day, and I live in Boston now, um, I always say I'm from Hopkinton. And um, even though it could be easier and there's not a follow-up conversation of where's that, um, I'm, because I'm, I'm from Hopkinton and uh, everything that I am is because I'm from here. Yeah, uh, it's a huge honor. I uh, really couldn't believe it when they told me that I was being recognized, but um, yeah, it's a huge honor. I, I love being from this town, so. All right, uh, do you have any advice that you would give to high school kids? Mm -hmm. Take your time, and things might seem bad now, but once you, looking back, it, it, it'll all be okay. I thought it went great. Uh, we had some nice connections that were made between the inductees and our students, and that's really at the heart of this, is to create inspiration for our current students, and I, I feel like that was mission accomplished. And I also saw a lot of smiles on the faces of the inductees, so I know that they uh, enjoyed this experience, and we you know it's our first year, so we learned a few things, but for sure it's going to be something we'll be bringing back in years to come, and uh, I just couldn't be happier at this, uh, at this moment. Have you heard any uh, reaction from the students as of right now? Yeah, the students thought it was really cool. They were impressed with the kind of wide spectrum of successes and accomplishments from, from some of our older members of the class, some of the stories they had about old Hopkinton with the other, how small it was, or some of the businesses that were in town that aren't here any longer, to some of our newer members who they could kind of see themselves as. And in fact, we had two students who shared contacts with uh, one of uh, with Megan uh, regarding you know studying in law down the road and maybe have some potential internships already in place. So uh, yeah, the students enjoyed it, and like I said, it's just that's what it's all about is creating these connections. So we're really excited. Well, it's a great program, and I'm sure it's going to be very successful down the road. Thanks a lot. Be sure to catch the whole Top of the Hill ceremony airing on HCAM. For many photos of the Top of the Hill festivities, be sure to check out sceneinhopkinton.org. Last week, adult services librarian Heather Backman gave HCAM News a demo of the new system for eBooks Access 360. Here is a look at yet another eBook service called Biblioboard. Our second new eBook option that we're offering is called Biblioboard. And some people might recognize this as a site that hosts the library's historical collections online. And it is, in addition to having eBooks, it has a lot of historical materials. Um, a lot of primary sources. It's actually really great for research as well. But now we also have ebooks on Biblioboard. And this is really the place to look if you're looking for graphic novels, if you're looking for something that's self published or independently published. There's a lot of that kind of content. Um, and if you're looking for sort of more niche or specialized content, Biblioboard, for example, has a lot of books from the Four Dummies series available um, through this service. We're suggesting that you use this from your computer for now. Um, it doesn't really have the best mobile interface and although you can download some things from it if you create an optional account um, generally to be able to read things you will need an internet connection active to get to biblioboard you're going to start again from our homepage hopkintonlibrary.org and this time you're going to go to do research and it's right there most of the way down the page it's going to think about it. Now the great thing about Biblioboard is you can create an account, but you don't have to. You don't have to log in. Uh, this is geolocated, which means if you're accessing it from anywhere in Massachusetts, it will just let you right into it without having to sign in or prove you have a library card or anything like that. So when you come in, there's a couple of ways you can find books specifically. If you use the advanced search here, you can choose content type book. So let's find a graphic novel. Let's find Black Beetle. And it's going to give us several suggestions. Um, but one of the things it's going to give us is the Black Beetle. So we can just go, say read this. It's going to think about it. And here it is right in the viewer. You can zoom out so you can see the whole page at once. And you can page through. You can jump around, page to page. Uh, and it looks pretty good. They do a good job if, you're, if you like graphic novels. 
um, with making these look really nice. Now the other way to find books, if you're really more interested in browsing, is to use the browse by feature up here. And you want to browse by modules. And what this lets you do, it lets you browse all the different publishers or sources of content on Biblioboard. And you know, you're going to see some things that are not necessarily ebooks. Um, but for instance, here's some of our independently published, uh, e uh, self published ebooks. And where I'm going to go is all the way down to the Wileys for Dummies. Um, so when you go into a module, you kind of go from a bigger division into a smaller division. So you're going to have to navigate down a little bit to, to find the right uh, book you're looking for. So we can go into Computers for Dummies. And now here's a variety of different topics that they have within the Computers section. So let's find Computer Programs. And now it's going to be showing us a, a bunch of different books that we can um, see here. Let's try Office 365 for dummies. So again, we just click read this and it thinks. And there's the book. We can go right into the table of contents and click on something to jump. Just going to take a moment. There we go. So you can page right through the book here, do all your reading. Um, it's a really great resource, especially for these kinds of um, more specialized or unusual things you might be looking for. And I do advise browsing Biblioboard to find out exactly what's in there because sometimes searching it you may not find precisely what it is you're after, but you can often find something similar. So we're very pleased to be able to offer both of these new resources, Access 360 and Biblioboard. We hope you'll try them out. And as always, if you have any questions, if something's not working for you, please don't hesitate to stop in or to call us or email us. We're always happy to help. We'd love to help you take advantage of these new resources. And we hope you do and you enjoy them. Thanks very much. The ebook services could be especially useful coming up as the Hopkinton Public Library will soon be closed for a bit. The library announced that they will soon be moving to 65 South Street while renovations take place. The timetable for how long the library will be in the temporary space has yet to be determined. On Friday, December 11th at 8 p.m., the library will close to the public while they move to the temporary location. They anticipate reopening at the temporary location on Tuesday, January 19th at 10 a.m. The Hopkinton Hillers football team capped off their season with a 35-33 win over Ashland on Thanksgiving to finish 6-5 overall. We will have highlights on HCAM News next week, but for now, you can see the replay of the full game airing on HCAM for everything else coming up on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, December 7th at 6.30 p.m., Claire Shapiro plays holiday tunes on the piano on Senior View. On Wake Up and Smell the Poetry at 7 p.m., Meg Tyler reads poetry inspired by her life. I have never seen eyes like yours, never looked into such a glittering, the way you look makes me want, like the sea, to let something in and let something out. At 8.30 p.m., heart disease in women is discussed on Physician Focus. 10% of our population develops preeclampsia or eclampsia during their pregnancies where their blood pressure goes up, they make a protein in their urine, and then they deliver the baby, the preeclampsia goes away, but what people don't realize is that actually increases their risk of cardiovascular disease over their lifetime. On Tuesday, December 8th at 6.30 p.m., Dr. John Zarella will discuss how oral health plays into overall health in the latest Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series, live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, December 9th at 11.30 a.m., Mary Star Green shares stress reduction techniques such as breathing exercises and meditation for the holiday season and beyond. 
At 8 p.m., Evan Bishop shares new policies and technologies being implemented at the high school on All About Hopkinton. Students can drop in for extra help, say if it's for college writing essay or if they have an assignment for class. Some kids are scheduled in there to get additional help on their skills. On Thursday, December 10th at 7 p.m., the school committee budget meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Friday, December 11th at 6.30 p.m., winter sports return with girls basketball versus Norton live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, December 13th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from December 7th will air. And on HCAM Ed, the very first Top of the Hill induction ceremony will air, where Hopkinton High School alumni are honored for their outstanding achievements. If you would like to know when all of this HCAM programming will air on our channels, visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. You can also subscribe to our daily news updates to keep up with all the latest Hopkinton happenings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, we thank you for watching. Smile has gone